Hello, my name is August Simonelli, and I'm from the Customer and Field Engagement Team at Red Hat. Today, we're going to look at how to install self-managed OpenShift onto Google Cloud via the Google Cloud Marketplace. By using OpenShift with Google Cloud Marketplace, you can more easily control costs with simplified purchasing, billing, and subscription management through a single invoice from Google. So, how can you take advantage of this today? Let me show you. The Marketplace provides OpenShift machine images to be used with an OpenShift self-managed install. You can choose the OpenShift billing type you prefer by using the allocated image for that type. But you don't deploy the images from the Marketplace directly. Instead, you're going to add them to your OpenShift install manifests and deploy them from there. And don't worry, it's easy to do, and I'm going to take you through both the Google Cloud and Red Hat steps now. To obtain the required resources to install OpenShift on Google Cloud, you'll need to download them from the Red Hat Hybrid Cloud console. If you don't have an account, you can register for free easily at cloud.redhat.com. Okay, now use your Red Hat account to log into the Red Hat Open Hybrid Cloud console. Navigate to the Clusters section and click on Create Cluster. Next, choose Google Cloud under the Run It Yourself section to use a Google Cloud Marketplace image. Now it's time to choose the type of install you plan to do. Choose Automated for an installer provisioned infrastructure or an IPI based install. With this install, the OpenShift installer will provision all the Google Cloud resources you need. From VMs to networks, it's all handled for you. If you prefer the flexibility of provisioning your own infrastructure, either by hand or with deployment manager templates, use full control. For today's demo, I'm going to use automated. From here, you'll find all the required tooling and can download it easily. Choose the installer binary that suits your hardware or maybe grab your poll secret for easy access to the OpenShift images. Uh, and even get command line tooling. It's all available in this one spot. We'll revisit how to do this a bit later while doing the cluster installation. And now it's time to build the cluster. To get started, you must have a project that will contain all the resources. The project needs to host a public zone and be authoritative for the domain. I've registered a domain and I've configured it in Cloud DNS within my project. Next, we need a service account. OpenShift Container Platform requires a Google Cloud service account that provides authentication and authorization to access data in the Google Cloud APIs. If you don't have an existing IMA service account that contains the required roles in your project, you must create one. Okay, now we need to assign the policies that allow the installer to interact with your Google Cloud infrastructure. Each policy contains a collection of role bindings that associate one or more principles, such as users or service accounts, with the role that it needs to perform. You do not need to grant an overarching owner role to the account. Instead, we have a list within our documentation of all the key roles you must assign to the account. Take a look at the docs and go ahead and assign the roles. Now, the OpenShift installer is going to use this service account to install the infrastructure. So to do that, you actually need a service account key. But keep in mind, when you create a service account key, the public portion is stored in Google Cloud while the private portion is available only to you. You need to protect this key as it allows access to all the infrastructure. Go ahead and create it in JSON format and download it to your computer. Next up, your Google Cloud project requires access to several API services to complete the OpenShift Container Platform installation. Use the Google API library to ensure uh, all the APIs are actually enabled, so you can go through and search for them and see if they're enabled. There are a lot of ways to do this via the UI, of course, um, and in this example, I'm trying it with Cloud Shell. You can actually use the G Cloud CLI from Cloud Shell or maybe from your own desktop, whatever you prefer, to enable the APIs that you need directly. There's a list of all the required APIs in the Red Hat documentation. Next, keep in mind that you may need to adjust the usage allowance for your project to accommodate your OpenShift cluster. Be sure to consider your actual cluster size and plan cluster growth. 
You may need to change things like CPU or persistent disk quotas as well. And you can always request quota increases directly from the Google Cloud Console. The resource requirements for a default cluster can be found in the Red Hat documentation. Excellent. With our Google Cloud project ready to go and our quotas approved, we are now ready to install OpenShift onto Google Cloud with the Google Cloud Marketplace images. Cluster installation is done using the CLI. Use the OpenShift installer we downloaded from the console. You'll need to create a cluster installation directory to hold the manifests we will generate that point to the marketplace images. I've created a directory called cluster for this purpose. The installer provides a step-by-step -step wizard to guide you through the creation of your cluster config file. First, provide access to an SSH key to allow access to OpenShift nodes, and then choose GCP as your platform. Now, we need to share the service account key that we downloaded with the installer. This will allow it to pre-populate most of the important fields across the next steps. I can see the project the service account is associated with. I can now then choose the region I'd like to deploy into. And I even see my base domain associated with the project. Okay, so after naming the cluster, I'm going to need to get that pull secret that we talked about earlier. You'll find your pull secret in the download section of the Open Hybrid Cloud Console in your Red Hat account. You can just scroll down to it, find the pull secret, you can copy it or download it. It's easy. If you want to copy it, it'll put it straight in your buffer and you can paste it right into the install wizard. The installer creates a YAML file called install config, which allows you to customize your cluster before installation. It builds that config file in the uh, installation directory and will consume it when you actually use it. So copy it out and then make your edits there. Inside the file, you can make all kinds of changes. It's very basic at first, but then you can go in and add what you need to. Uh, for me, I wanted to use E2 instances for my GCP deployments. So I've just added them into the sections relevant, in this case, compute and control plane. Once I've made those edits, I then obviously put the file back into the uh, installation directory. Next, we need to generate the Kubernetes manifest that will be used to install the cluster. We do this so we can edit them and set the Google Cloud Marketplace image to be used in the installation. Running the installer with this manifest target will consume our install config file and render the manifest templates and output the result into the installer or the asset directory. Okay, so now that we've generated our deployment files with the manifest target, we're gonna to need to edit them to add in the marketplace images. There are definition files for the cluster's control plane and data plane nodes. Looking into the file, we will find a definition for the disk or Google Cloud image to use with each type of node. And here we see the relative path to the image inside of Google Cloud. As you can see, this references an image with Arcos Cloud in the path. And looking at the file for the workers, we see the same path, same image, same Arcos Cloud uh, namespace. But this is actually not the Google Cloud Marketplace image. So if this isn't the image we need, what is the image we need? I mean, how do we get the right Google Cloud Marketplace image for this? It's easy. Just check out the Red Hat documentation. From the preparing to install on Google Cloud page, you'll find a link to installing the cluster with customizations. And on that page, there's a really easy link to the Marketplace Image page. On that page, we have the information you need. Simply scroll down and find the links to the Marketplace Image. You can see it here in the path. This is the image we're going to use. Next, we need to add this new image path value to the relevant definition files for the control plane and worker nodes. Here, I'm removing the old image path and putting the new one with the marketplace in the path directly into the file. And of course, be sure to remove the old reference. You need to ensure you do the same process for the workers because we're going to use the same Google Cloud image from the marketplace for both control plane and workers. Thank you. 
And of course, you would have noticed that there's more than one file for each type of node. So I'm going to use a simple find and a YQ command to actually substitute that image line out in all of my files. So I'm going to do that across the uh, control plane and the workers and uh, change that around. So let's just make sure that's actually worked. I'll pick one of the machine sets I haven't shown you yet. And there we see the marketplace image has been inserted. With the manifest updated with the marketplace image paths, you can proceed with cluster installation. Using the IPI method, the installer will create all the Google Cloud infrastructure required for you. You can then view the deployed infrastructure and see that both the control plane and the data plane nodes are using the Google Cloud Marketplace images and will therefore now be billed through the Google Cloud Marketplace. Once the deployment finishes, you can use the details output by the installer to log into your cluster or go to the hybrid cloud console for more options. In the console, you'll find your cluster listed and something that you can inspect. There are multiple tabs. You can get an overview of the cluster, review monitoring and issues detected, set up access control, review the cluster history, and even open a support case directly from the console. You can then follow the open console link to log in directly to your running OpenShift cluster. And it's pretty cool. When you run OpenShift on Google Cloud, the integrations are there by default. It's really helpful. And you'll find even more useful integrations in your self-managed OpenShift on Google Cloud cluster, including recommendations from Red Hat Insights to keep things running smoothly. And there you have it. With Red Hat OpenShift now available on Google Cloud Marketplace, you can get OpenShift through a flexible pricing model while receiving just one invoice from Google Cloud. It's perfect. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. We've put as many links in the description as possible, but please reach out to your friendly Red Hatter for more information. Thanks a lot. Bye.